so bright. As you can see, I got some new lighting. It's very bright. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And as you can see, I am being blinded right now. I'm trying to figure this all out. Can't figure out if it's too bright because I am blinded. I can't see anything. Really bouncing off all my pores. everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alana and like I mentioned in my last video, I am here with a plant video. I think what I'm gonna do is, I, I did mention this actually last week, is I'm gonna do like a tattoo video, a plant video, a tattoo video, a plant video, as much as I can because those are the two things that I'm really interested in and so if I can kind of like mesh those two things together, I get to talk about things that I'm really interested in and then my viewers get a little bit of mix matchy and now that, you know, plants are so popular in today's culture, everyone that knows a little bit about plants or everyone knows at least someone who's addicted to plants like myself. I have with me my three spider plants here. I I only have three. I don't have all the variegations and variations. There are three different types. There might be more, but like three of the most common ones are basic green one, which I have here. It's a little floppy, but I have the regular green one here. And then also I have the more white variegated ones here. So you can see that it has like um, a little bit of white going through his leaves. And then this one is also just a basic green one. They are called spider plants because when they are mature, they shoot out pups. Some people call them spider pups. Some people call them spiderettes. I just call them spider babies. That is again, poking me in the face. I call them spider babies because that's what they look like. Basically what happens is they'll grow a shoot kind of like this guy here. I did accidentally break the baby off. <laughs> Oopsies. They will grow a little baby. And then basically what you can do is you can just put that directly in water and it'll root and then you can put it in dirt and you have a brand new plant. That is literally how I got this entire plant. All of these, there is one, two, three, four different shoots in here and they're all babies from my mother's mama spider plant. So if you have a friend who has a spider plant, just ask them for a little cutting of their baby and you have your own spider plant. It's a really cool gift for someone. My mom just did a bridal shower for someone and gave away her spider pups as presents. It's pretty cool actually because they grow so easily and they're super adaptable. Spider plants are also a NASA clean air plant, which means that they take out 90 percent of formaldehyde in the air which if you think about it that's pretty cool if you have a couple in your house your air is cleaner than people who don't have it so i keep one in my bedroom so while i'm sleeping i know i'm breathing in the nice clean air that these spider plants give off spider plants are very adaptable honestly if you live in an apartment that has a lot of light it'll thrive if you live in a house or apartment that does not have a lot of light it will survive if you have basically no light in your house, it will survive. I have mine under UV lights. I don't have my UV lights on right now. I keep him here under all the UV lights and he just loves it. They all love it. They do really well. If you do have a place like with no UV light or no sun or whatever, chances are it'll thrive. With the green ones, so like the all green ones, they don't need near as much light as variegated ones. Another thing is that they are not toxic to animals. I did read somewhere, I don't know how much truth there is to this, but I did read somewhere that spider plants have a sort of hallucinogenic effect on cats. So if your cat is munching on your spider plant, chances are it's getting a little high from your plant. So let's get right into this about like the basic care of spider plants, just how to water, how to give it the best life that it can have. So we are gonna start out with watering. This is honestly one of the most basic plants that I own. So this video won't be too, too long, but I am gonna talk about just kind of how much I water it, just kind of like my own personal experience. I would say that these plants prefer an average amount of water. Now I know that that's kind of vague. So to kind of give you my own personal experience, I water every 10 to 14 days or when it's super dry. They like to dry out between waterings and they're totally okay being dry. If you are a beginner planter and you want to find a plant that you're not gonna have to really stress too much about a spider plant is a really good option because you can let it dry out a little bit more than some other plants. I make sure that all my pots have really good drainage. So this one has an actual drainage pot underneath so all the extra water goes down here and that's awesome because then it only takes the water that it needs. In a pot like this that has like no drainage hole and no drainage, I have the bottom of this pot filled with rot. That will prevent root rot which is also very 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 bad for your plant. Make sure you have some sort of drainage. You can use rocks, you can use crumpled up tin foil, as long as there's something on the bottom to give about an inch of just air so that any extra water can be sucked up into the dirt as needed. Another thing is water. If you know that your water is high in fluoride, your spider plant might not like it. If you do have water that is high in fluoride, you might see some brown tips. Use distilled water. I use water from my Brita filter. It kind of gets all those chemicals out of there. I like that. Rainwater is also a really good idea. So, you know, if you live in an area that you can have a rain barrel, just put a rain barrel out, fill your watering can up with rainwater and water your plants. They love that. It's natural. That's kind of what they get in the wild, right? So if you think about it, whatever's healthiest, the plant outside, then it will thrive indoors as well. Don't overwater these plants. They do not like to be waterlogged. If you overwater, you do risk root rot. Now this isn't just for snake plants, or I always say snake plants. It's not snake plants, it's spider plants. This is true for all plants, not only spider plants, is they can get root rot, which is really not good. The leaves will turn brown, they'll get droopy, and eventually they'll just end up dying. Let them dry out between each watering, your plant will love it. 
So on to light now. Like I said, uh, most plants are a little bit more fussy when it comes to light condition. This guy is so adaptable. He will thrive just about anywhere. If there's a little bit of sunlight, he will thrive. And with the variegation on this one, if it is in a lower light condition, these white strips around the leaf might turn all green and you'll lose all your variegation in there, which isn't the end of the world. But if you want the light green and the white variegation on it, then you should probably put it in a higher light condition. And like every other plant, too much sun can burn your plant. Give it a little sunburn. So try to avoid putting in direct light. If you have UV lights, I let mine run all through the day and then I turn them off at night just so they do have some darkness and they don't get burned. I made the mistake of burning one of my plants. I put it under the UV lights when I first got the lights and it like singed the leaves. It was so sad. So I make sure that there is some darkness for my plants so that it's not just burning my plants to a crisp last point I'm gonna make here is humidity. Unlike monstera plants, which was my last plant video, they really don't need much humidity. Honestly, like the average household has enough humidity to house these plants. I'm gonna say this again, they are the most adaptable plants. If you are looking for a plant that basically needs no care but water it every two weeks, just get a spider plant. You'll have babies in no time, which is awesome because like I said, you can give them to your friends. So let's talk about potting. One last little tip that I forgot to mention was they like to be a little bit root bound. So root bound is when you have a big plant in a smaller pot and they have kind of the roots that wrap around the pot like this. They like that. They like to be snug in their pot. So don't rush to repot your new spider plant. Let it sit in the nursery pot if you buy it from a store for a few months, even up to a year. Make sure that you see, so if you lift up the nursery pot and you see the roots coming out of the bottom, that's a good time to repot. Pot it. Don't do it anytime before because there's no point. It'll probably just die off because they like to be root bound. Honestly, that's basically it. This is like the most basic plant that I can think of, which is why I wanted to make a video on it because when I started looking into plants and I started buying plants, I was looking for ones that I knew I wasn't gonna kill. So this and a pothos and some peace lily variations, honestly, are like the easiest plants to take care of. I wanted to start basic and kind of work my way up, which is stupid because I started with a monstera, which is not the easiest plant to take care of, but whatever, it's my favorite plant. That's why I did it. So I just wanted to start start with something so that if you are an aspiring plant person and you want to start looking at plants, definitely stick with the spider plant because it will thrive no matter where you are. That's it. I'm literally trying to rack my brain right now thinking of other tips to give you, but there is literally nothing. They are the easiest plants to take care of. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Anyways, that is all for this week's video. I know it's a little bit short, but I did tell you I was going to be back with a plant video and this was the most basic one that I could think of to start out with. If you have a plant that you want me to talk about, I am more than happy to take recommendations. I am loving this whole plant vibe that I got right now going on my channel because I think it really ties into who I am as a person. You know, I get to talk about my tattoos and I get to talk about my plants and I just get to be, you know, who I want to be on this platform because, you know, when I was trying to stick with just tattoo videos, it's like I you run out of ideas, right? Like it's just like, hey, what am I going to do? So I, you know, I stick to plants because I know about plants and there's billions of different variations of plants so I can talk about each and every one. So if you have any recommendations, I would love to hear them and I will be back next time with a, hopefully with a tattoo video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.